Hey guys, this is just a quick little tutorial on making ZBrush history movies. Uh, one thing that you might have noticed if you've tried to do this is that doing it with multiple subtools can be kind of confusing. So I'm just going to clear all that up. If you've been following my Z dailies, you've probably seen uh, what it is, but you might not know how to do it. So I'm just going to go over everything real quick. So we'll go into our movie tab here. And first thing I do is just change some modifiers. This history interpolate frames, uh, if you make it lower, it will render your movie faster, so that's kind of useful. And you don't really lose any performance or anything. Or uh, quality, I should say. And also, I like to. Uh, change this a little bit higher and the H center I like to put a little bit higher I feel like it's, it's a little bit easier to follow the sculpt if uh, this HR center sliders at around 50 and for the timeline we don't care about that uh, tile image I just turn it off I don't want that Overlay image, turn the opacity to zero so you don't get that garbage either. So you're pretty much ready at this point. Um, you can change this stuff too, which is useful. I usually do document. Uh, you can do window if you want people to see what's going on in your entire ZBrush program. But I like document better. And then I go large too, just more pixels better. Okay, so. First thing you're going to want to do is decide which part of your sculpt you're going to want to start with, and then you will build out from there. So I would say a good part is the head to start with in this scenario. So I'm just going to hide everything that's not the head. So that's fine. I can just do that. And I will uh, make sure that I have a material and color selected that will look nice in the video because uh, before you assign a material to your sculpt it will just go to the default. So just make sure that it's something that is easy to see. I think that blend is pretty good. It's easy to see what's going on when you sculpt. So I just do blend and then white. So we will go ahead and do the F history. Also, I set my background with black. I'll show you how to do that, too. But uh, you can see it's going pretty quick because I changed that interpolation modifier down to two instead of four. And with the H center modifier to 50 instead of zero, it's not like flying around and zooming in everywhere. It's kind of keeping a consistent distance. I think it's just really annoying when the camera's like zooming in constantly. So maybe for the next one, I'll do the shirt. So uh, I'm not going to change the orientation in the scene or else it will make the continuity of the whole thing mess up. So I'll probably do the shirt next, I guess. So now I'll select the shirt, make sure everything else is hidden except for the head and the shirt. And I will F history. This one will go really quick. Okay, now I can uh, 
let's say let's do the eyes next so I'll turn on the visibility and switch the sub tool same thing and how about the teeth next <laughs> it looks really funny I'm going through all the sub tools like this <laughs> Now the glasses, I actually did this in a different uh, tool completely, so there won't be much here for the glasses, just moving it around and stuff. Like I said, it's some of it in the scene. Okay, and how about the eyebrows next? I guess, oh, I delete, okay. Sometimes if you're like in the middle of your history, you have to like go to the end and then do F history or else it won't do anything. So yeah, just make sure you're at the end of your history. And last but not least, the bulk hair. Again, this isn't at the end, so I'll have to just drag it to the end. Then I can F history. And I actually didn't assign any materials to my object, so I guess I could have just went with my final material, but the only problem with that is it's kind of hard to tell what's going on when you sculpt, so I'll just uh, set it right now. And at this point, at the end of my video, I like to do a turntable, so I'll just zoom out at this point, go to modifiers, and uh, I like one spin cycle and for spin frames I usually double it just because the 180 spin frames is kind of quick so I'll do that and click on turntable and it will do a quick little turntable That's it, now you can export it. For some reason, 4R7, they use MPG, I don't even know what the heck that is, but that's fine. And it will export it. At this point, you can take in the After Effects, add some uh, music or maybe a title card or something. now you're all done so I usually like to either at the beginning of my video or at the end include a render so I guess we can find a cool angle render it out I just click BPR up here that's all and I'll just go straight to filters and add some noise. Change that to multiply, oh, maybe not. Maybe not, replace. 
maybe that's too much noise. And then this is cool too, you can uh, do a blur and uh, set the depth to 1. Maybe increase the radius, maybe not that high. And it gives it a depth of field effect. Kind of cheated depth of field. Something like that. And then we can document export as a JPEG or whatever. And crop it. I'll just leave it. I'll just leave it like that. And that's it. Thanks for watching. Hope this helped you. And uh, stick around for our next video.